All right, it's here. Marvel's saving grace for phase fucking four. Did it live up to the hype? All right, nerds, this is my Thor Love and Thunder review. Um, as you know, like the video. Thank you for 100K, but I don't care about that soft shit. Let's just get into the review. I just want to say, I went into this movie wanting to enjoy it. I had no expectations. I didn't I didn't want to fall victim into what I felt for Doctor Strange 2. I don't want to have any expectations. I wanted to just go enjoy a film. I think Ragnarok gets overhyped a little bit, but that's still a very good film. I think that's one of the best MCU films. It is overhyped a little bit, um, but it did it made Thor a, a fun character. I understand that. It really helped his character. Um, and that's what I expected for Love and Thunder. I expected that. I expected a comedy film. But let me be honest with you. This is a fucking comedy film. It's a comedy film. It's a rom-com. Very little serious tones. Very little serious moments. And if there are serious moments, they're kind of overshadowed by the 20 jokes that came right before it. Going into this movie, I wanted to enjoy it. I didn't want to have any problems with it. I just wanted to go have a couple laughs. And that's what I did. I had a couple laughs. As far as the seriousness in this movie, non-fucking existence. There is, there's a couple serious moments and those fucking shine. But outside of that... Not really that much. So let's get into it. First, let's start off with Thor the character. Thor, he's he's the main thing in this movie. No, These movies wouldn't happen without Thor. Without the enthusiasm of Chris Hemsworth, without him wanting to be that character, these movies wouldn't happen. They probably would have fucking stopped at Thor 1 or maybe even Thor 2. Thor 3, Ragnarok, would not have happened without Chris Hemsworth and Taika Waititi. And I applaud them for that. I, I understand that he cares for this character. And I really enjoy that. that that's amazing. But... Thor's an idiot in this movie. If you're trying to tell me Thor has this insane character rebuttal, this insane character arc, he doesn't. He's an idiot. He doesn't care. He goes back. If anything, I feel like he retracts because this whole movie, he treats it kind of like a joke. He has one good moment with Jane Foster, and that's it. He has, a, he has one good moment at the end. He finally gets a little rebuttal. But other than that... I think he's just the big dummy that he's that he's turned out to be in these movies. He's busting jokes. I mean, he doesn't care about the battle. He doesn't care about stuff. I mean, he obviously has serious issues, but they're played for jokes. And I understand you're going to hit me with, oh, he's using that to, to mask how he really feels. Yeah, okay. But, I mean, it's just like we're watching a movie. I want to see a serious character. I want to see Thor actually go through some stuff. And he does. He does go through some stuff, but not in the way that anybody would kind of enjoy it at least i wouldn't enjoy it but that's fine taiko Waititi definitely got everything he wanted to do with this movie i feel like there wasn't anything he couldn't control there's no like mcu formula in the background of kevin feige pulling the fucking strings there's none of that i think taiko Waititi got full reigns he got anything he wanted to do and he did in this movie and that's kind of where the problem goes because he goes off a little too much i feel like yes this is a comedy film i felt like yes i enjoyed it i had a good laughs but when you start saying, oh, it's the best MCU movie, oh, it's the best this, it's the best that, no. It's just a comedy film. It's an enjoyable comedy film, and that's it. And that's all you can put out of it. Has it saved Marvel MCU Phase 4? No. Has it revamped my confidence in Marvel for the years coming forward? No. But, I mean, it's a good movie. It's an enjoyable flick. It's a comedy film. It made me laugh, like I said. The main story beats come from this fucking man of a god. Christian Bale. He literally has Christian in his name. He is a god amongst men. But he's only in the movie like 20 minutes, if that. This movie opens up with one of the best MCU op openings I think I've ever seen in a while. The emotional beats of Gore and his daughter and everything, it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then you go off this sidetrack with Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, and it's just a big joke from there on. Yes, they're trying to take Thor's character serious. They're trying to say, oh, he's, you know, you get the core of monologue. Oh, he's been through all this. He went from bad bod to dad bod, all kind of stupid shit like that. But then it's just like, okay, it's a comedy film. The tonal shifts in this movie are one of the biggest things that in my mind like go crazy. Because I'm like, okay, you start off with this serious scene of Gore and, you know, what happens with him. I'll, I'll get into spoilers in a second. But you, you know what happens with him and he's got this serious, you know, I'm going to kill all the fucking gods. Blah, blah, blah. I got this whole rebuttal, re revenge arc, all this stuff. And then you go back to Thor and it's a damn comedy film. Like, they don't, they don't mix well. They don't mix well. And you can have that and that's what it's trying to do, but they don't mix well. It all depends on if they mix well. If they don't mix well, then it doesn't come off good. And that's... The biggest thing, I think. Great visuals in this movie. Great special effects. CGI kind of looks wonky, but I mean, it, 
Whenever 90% of the movie CGI, a couple of it's gonna look wonky, and I'm okay with that. They, the last battles one, it's really beautiful. The way they mix color, the way they mix the fighting in and out with it, that's really great. Three quarters into this movie, I took a step back. I, I stopped overanalyzing everything. I just took a step back and enjoyed the film. And I had a great time, because I just like, okay, this is a cool film. You know, there's a scene where it, colors being implemented and Jane Foster gets to use her hammer and it's just like whoa shine and it's just like little stuff like that makes me think oh if they took that seriousness in the movie the whole time this could have been a fucking this could have been a masterpiece in my books in my books this could have been a masterpiece could have been a well articulated you know emotional beat movie of Thor Jane and Gore and it just it doesn't do that but like it leans too much into the comedy side and you know that's fine but I mean when, when you try and say it's amazing it's just it's like I don't think it's that amazing before we get into spores uh if you're up to this point just want to say Watch this movie, enjoy it. It's definitely one you don't want to miss. I mean, you can wait till Disney Plus, but I feel like it looks better on the big screen. Thor's a dummy again, but it's kind of it's kind of the point of the movie that it's a comedy movie, and you can enjoy it. You can go in, have a couple laughs, see Thor again, see good characters like Valkyrie, um, see Christian Bale's amazing performance for 20 minutes, see Jane Foster as the Mighty Thor. You can see all these things and have a good time in this movie. It's an enjoyable flick. So go watch this. Starting this point, I'm gonna go start. I'm gonna talk about spoilers, and that's it. Starting now. So. Take your fucking deodorant, take a shower, you know, all kind of shit that you're not going to do anyway. Go do that. Go watch the movie and then come back and I'll give you some spoiler talk. Three, two, one. I think Thor should have died. I don't think Jane Foster should have died. I think Jane, I think Thor should die. I understand Thor probably will die in the next movie if they make another one or somewhere down the line. At the end of this movie, I felt like it would have been better if they would have both joined in Valhalla or they would have both died. It would have made me feel better. Jane and Thor is the emotional beat of this movie. That's where the series comes in. Yes, they do have some jokes. Yes, they do play as a rom-com, but at the end when Jane dies and you see her holding Thor or Thor holding her, that's an emotional beat. Her battle with cancer, everything, that's emotional. That's I think that's probably the best executed beat in this whole movie. If they would have played more into that, I would have loved it. Um, but you only get that at the end. Like, you only really get that at the end. You get that whenever she's on the dining table and Thor's like, stay here. I want to save us. I want to save me and you for later in my life. I don't want you to pick up the hammer again and die. That made me feel something. That That's what got me going. An hour and a half before that, you don't see any of that. It's just jokes after jokes after jokes after jokes of this and that. And then it hits you like a fucking Mack truck about, oh, we're going to be this emotional movie now. We're going to be this overly serious, like this serious take movie instead of the comedy movie. And it's just like that tonal shift I was talking about. How are you going to have one thing and then go switch to another and don't blend it well? It just didn't blend well for me. The Thor and Jane Foster dynamic is one of the, is, is the best thing of the movie, I feel like. That's the one thing they dedicated their whole time to fooling out. You've seen these characters for four plus movies, three plus movies, wherever the fuck they've been in. And you know that they have this dynamic. And yes, they do try and flesh it out a little bit more, but that's the best dynamic of this movie, Thor and Jane. And I feel like really the terse from that is when you th when you just nail an amazing performance by Christian Bale on the sidelines. Christian Bale, I feel like if, if they would have done him kind of how they did Thanos, making him a centerpiece of the movie, or making him um, you know more of a centerpiece than the 20 minutes we saw of him, like I said, it would have been amazing because he, like I said, does a great performance. Outside of Thor and Jane, he is the starstruck. Every single scene he's in, in is perfect. Every single scene is an emotional, well-acted, serious tone movie, and it's perfect. And at the start where you see his daughter dying, like I was saying, amazing. And then you see him, you, you see him see this spoiled god in the background living lavish and saying, Oh, you're gonna die, you're just another follower, and then he fucking guts him. That like that that's that's peak. That's uh that's peak. That's that's great. That's what I want to see. And then they glance over it, and then he, it's like, oh, he's killing all these gods. They glance over it in like a damn montage, in like a in on a slideshow. It's like it's like how Batman v Superman showed all the Justice League members on a slideshow, and it's just like, oh, he did all these things. Okay, I would have fucking loved to see that. You couldn't throw that in. This movie was two hours. You couldn't have made it two thirty and just gave me thirty minutes of Gore the God Butcher killing all these gods. You couldn't have done that. This whole movie, he kills one fucking god. You see him kill one god. And that's it. Okay. Fucking fantastic. Like, you couldn't have showed us that. I mean, it's just like, it's stuff like that where I think, I think Taka Waititi or Marvel didn't have the, they either, they either didn't care to or they didn't want to spend their money on. Because it's just like, we wanted to see that. But, I don't know. Like I said, this movie's enjoyable. It's, uh, it's definitely better than Doctor Strange 2. It's definitely, I think it's the best Marvel movie 
um, since Spider Man No Way Home. But I mean, there's only been one Marvel movie since that. I, I, I think I think it's I think it's up there with Phase Four. It'd probably go Spider Man No Way Home, Shang Chi, then Thor. Uh, it's it's a it's a solid film. I think I think I think it was really good. You know good enjoyable movie just not the best thing it could have been also before we go talk about post credit scenes first one i love seeing hercules that was fucking dope i love seeing that it's pretty cool second post credit scene it didn't really need to be in there you know i mean we the, i hate i hate i hate i hate marvel fake deaths they've done it a thousand times and they're going to do it probably a thousand more we had four fake deaths in this movie core sith J uh not jane valkyrie zeus Four death, four fake deaths. Everybody, all of them lived, and the, and then we and then we have an emotional beat of Jane dying, and then ten minutes later, you show her in Valhalla. I saw some. I, I, I trust me. I saw some TikTokers saying, "Oh, this was the best. The, the emotional story beats of the post of the second post crew team was so amazing." No. You, you threw away the death of Jane Foster just to throw her back in a post credit scene 10 minutes later. You save that. Why wouldn't you not save that? You save that for when Thor dies so he meets everybody. So Thor can see Loki, his mom, Odin, Jane, every, Heimdall, everybody. He can see everybody once and you have that emotional story. Because now it's just like, oh, we've already seen Valhalla. We've already seen Heimdall and Jane in, in, in Valhalla. And it's just like, whenever Thor gets there, it's like, okay, we already saw that. He, 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 he's mean him again. And it's just like, no, just save it. You throw everything out on the table without throwing the right things out. I wouldn't have cared if they had a post credit scene that they gave us more Gore the, Gore the God Butcher stuff. I wouldn't have cared. But, you know, whatever. Guys, go watch this movie. You're going to like it, I think, um, especially if you're a fucking Marvel nerd. You might be disappointed like I am. But if you go in just having, uh, just wanting to enjoy it, have a good comedy film, made you laugh at times, made me laugh. But go watch it, boys. It's definitely one I would recommend to go watch. 7 out of 10. That's my ranking right here seven out of ten um but yeah that's it guys love y'all uh appreciate y'all for 100k go watch store love and thunder it's a good ride good comedy film that's it